Welcome. Um, we, on behalf of the board and all the members of the system, good morning and thank you for coming to our conference this morning. It's been several years since we've all been able to, to gather in person. And as you can tell from the attendance of almost 300 people that are here, um, we've had quite the turnout this morning. So for those of you that are standing along the wall, there's some uh, seats up front. Like at school and church, if you're late, you have to come up front and, <laughs> and come join us. But again, we're very pleased to have everyone here this morning. I'd like to start my remarks this morning by thanking the first responders. There are several of, of you all in the room, and it's for the very reason we exist, is to serve you. You serve the public, and we're here to serve you. So thank you very much for your service to our community. <laughs> Also amongst you are out there, there's a wide variety of people who participate in the system. We have elected officials, we have finance and HR staff, and we have local board members, we have members of the system, employees of the system, and we have the board itself and members of our advisory committee here. And you'll hear more about that as we, as we go through this morning. Uh, but again, we wanna welcome you and we wanna thank you, especially those of you who came from up north. What about the timing of this conference? I can't believe what you might have had to come through to get here, and I don't know what you're thinking about whether you can get back tonight or it's gonna be a couple of days. So we'd love to have you stay down here, um, but whatever we can do to help your accommodations, if you have to leave early this afternoon, obviously, we completely understand that. But thanks for making the effort to come all the way down here um, through the snow. In terms of the material, you would have gotten an email yesterday that had some links to the various, all the presentations and all that kind of stuff. That'll be out on the website. I believe as we go through some of the presentations, there'll be the QCR code that you can grab with your phone and, and get that presentation live while you're going through uh, the presentations as well. So this morning, the way we've got this laid out is we'll all be in here together. Um, and go through what we think are some really global issues that you're all uh, interested about, no matter what role you play in, in helping us manage this system, whether you're finance or HR on a local board. And then after the break, we're gonna break out into sessions and it'll give you a chance to go learn more about what we're doing actuarially or local board practices or investments. So we've done that format the last couple of years. It works out really well. It gives you a chance to kind of customize your knowledge and then at three o'clock, for those of you that want to come back, please come back here. We're going to have an open forum discussion with the staff and the trustees. Typically, as you go through a day like this, the questions come up and you don't have a chance to come back to where we started and just kind of put, put, a, put a pin in some of the things that you might have some questions about. So that last hour, really an open forum, just ask us some questions and, and, and any kind of thoughts or um, opinions you have about what you heard today is, is greatly, greatly appreciated. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with, with the program. We've got a lot of things to share with you. For those of you that are familiar with PSPRS, and I'll probably say back for myself about 10 years, um, I'll start with this thought. This isn't the same PSPRS system that you would have been here at 10 years ago. This system has made tremendous improvements, um, basically because of all the, the activity and the input from all the stakeholders, whether it was the members or the employers or the local boards, and you're gonna hear about that. Um, we've had a couple of these sessions over the last several years uh, virtually, but it's just not the same as sitting next to people and really hearing what this system's been, been up to, especially the last three or four years. So with that, I've got some opening slides and then I'll turn it over to our administrator, Mike Townsend, who's gonna talk a little bit about a little bit more of the details um, in terms of some of the things that we've got going on. But for those of you that are new to PSPRS, just as a reminder, you know, who are we? Uh, we represent 60,000 members, retirees, and beneficiaries, about 250 employers, and we've got three plans. We focus a lot on the first one, PSPRS, which is the public safety, the first responders. We've also got the correction officers and the elected officials and then with some reform uh, recently in the last couple of years, we've got a lot more activity going on in the DB or the defined contribution space. And then we have a really unique plan to us, our cancer insurance plan. And for those of you that are more interested in that, um, that'll be part of a breakout session. And that's one of the, 
the action items that the board's working on. So you're going to hear more about what we're thinking relative to that plan throughout the course of the day as well. And so this is our recipe, our formula that I would say we've probably been committed to the last handful of years. And, and all of these have to be working in concert with each other to see the kind of results that we've been fortunate to see. But we spent a lot of time at the board about system governance. You'll, you'll meet the board members in a minute and, and our committees. Obviously, you hear about a pension system. The first thing that comes to mind is investments um, between our vice chair, who's uh, head of the investment committee, and our chief uh, investment officer, Mark Steed. Your investments are in great hands, and, and they'll, they've got a session this afternoon that's going to talk to you about that. We've spent a lot of time on our funding policy creating a clear picture about where we want this system to go. And you'll see those financial results in a slide or two. Um, and then as I alluded to earlier, just your involvement here, uh, stakeholder roles and ownership has tremendously increased, whether you're an employer, whether you're a member of a local board, or anybody else that touches this system, you have really been a lot more active in this system the last couple of years, and we greatly appreciate that. And then the last piece of this puzzle is the exceptional PSPRS staff. We can make some really good decisions at the board level, but if they're not getting implemented, um, they're all for naught. And the staff here under the leadership of Mike Townsend is just phenomenal. And this staff works really hard and uh, operationalizes all the decisions that we at the board get to make. So that's, as you go through today, think about all five of those pieces working together like a puzzle and it'll help you to, to kind of contextualize the success that we've been able to have. So for better or for worse, it all starts with us, quite honestly, at the board level. So I want to take a minute and acknowledge all the board members. Some of them are, are not here yet. They will be here later this morning. But obviously, um, I alluded to Harry Papp, our vice chair. Harry, could you stand up for us? So Harry Papp's our vice chair, and he's the chair of our investment committee. Thanks, Harry. Um, Randy Stein, are you here? Randy is not here. Chris Hemmen, I know, is here. Chris, where are you? Chris is over here. Chris works for DPS and is one of the law enforcement representatives on the board. Brian Moore. Brian, I know you're in the back. Brian will be the man walking around here with crutches to we'll be able to stand out. And we had, a la we had a tough last board meeting, so that's what can happen at those board meetings. <laughs> Sorry, Brian, I just couldn't help myself. Um, uh, Dean Shiner, I know, is, is not here yet. Alan McGuire, where's Alan? Alan is back there in the corner. Uh, the perspective that Alan brings to this board, Alan's been on the board many years ago, so he has seen the transformation of this system. Nate Weber, Nate is up here. Nate, please stand. Nate works for Tucson Fire and is one of the representatives from the, the Fire Association. And then Darren Wonderly is in the back. Darren works for uh, Phoenix PD. So one of the observations as I speak, you know, locally and, and across the country is when we did the reform back in 2016, we changed the number of board members and we changed the, the makeup and the criteria to be on the board. And that is one of the best things that we ever did. It wasn't always, a lot of the success we have isn't about investing more money in some things. It's about the makeup of this board. We all come to this system with the shared objective, which is to make sure we're taking care of our members, but we do it with different backgrounds. And the labor or the fire and the police representatives have a tremendous amount of insight into what the members are thinking. And it helps us tremendously make some really, really good decisions. And then you have people like Alan and Harry Papp who are tremendous investment minds and are doing some things with our system that we probably should have been doing all along, quite honestly, but we're now doing it. And so th that perspective and our different backgrounds really adds a tremendous amount of value to what's going on at the system. And I just wanted to take a few minutes and, and share that perspective of me. I enjoy serving with these people. These people work very hard, not only at the board meetings, but all of them are on committees and then all of them are constantly taking phone calls, especially the police and the fire representatives. So just a tremendous amount of work for them. A little bit about our committee structure. We allow our committees to do a lot of the heavy lifting on items before they come to the board. So we have an investment committee. We have a defined contribution committee that's chaired by uh, Trustee Brian Moore. 
then Operations, Governance, and Audit Committee is chaired by Dean Scheinert. Those committees all meet once a month, uh, the Investment and the Operations Committee. And as I said, they handle the day-to-day -day things so that when they come to the board, we're able to get right to the policy decisions that need to be made. And then one more uh, item on this slide that's unique to us is our advisory committee. So that's a 10-member board that's made up of our five employers and uh, employee representatives. And they um, handle a lot of the hot topics for us as we're going through some things. We're able to give them an assignment. If they take a look at this for us, what do you think about where we're headed with the pension funding policy? And it allows us to pro provide informal feedback to us. They are inv advisory, so they typically don't take votes on things, but they pass along their thoughts about where we're headed on a particular issue. That's pretty unique to this system, and again, I think it's another reason we've been pretty successful the last, the last several years. So think about our stakeholders. So when we're at the board level and, we're, and the, the employees at the system, think about who we're serving when we make decisions. We got about, we got seven different types of constituents out there. Obviously, we've got the active members. We've got the retirees and the beneficiaries. We've got the employers. We've got local boards. We've got the state legislature, which we're experiencing right now because they're in session. You hear a little bit more about that from our consultants. We've got our taxpayers. And then, you know, recently we've, we've increased our awareness with ASRS because about um, there's a significant amount of our population that's actually getting retirees that are getting their health care from ASRS. So the board's getting a little bit more involved in what's going on with ASRS offerings about health care. And again, that'll be one of the initiatives you hear about in a moment. So along the way, um, we're all just responsible for this system while we're here. And Trustee Brian Moore brought this issue forward uh, in August of this year. Uh, Captain Benny Ashley uh, was with the Phoenix Fire Department. He's actually one of the guys who created PSPRS. And he celebrated his 105th birthday with us, if you could imagine that. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? And so that's Benny, and that's the board. At the board meeting, we had a cake, and he had a, a couple of, of, of words for us. But here's the gentleman who actually created and thought about and made the initiative to create the very system that we're sit here operating. And so thanks for Brian for, for bringing Benny forward and for Benny to share that um, was a pretty special moment for him. And he, he came with his daughter and his uh, son-in-law. So anyway, just wanted to share that, that moment with you. That was pretty impactful for me and reminds us we're just, we're just here and doing our thing for whatever our terms are and there's a greater good that's going on here with the system. It truly is a, a special place. So here's some numbers, and I get, I get to do all the fun stuff. So $5 billion, everybody out there who's part of an employer who either made extra payments, issued debt, just decided we're good people and you'd like to give us some more money, raise your hand. Because in the aggregate, over the last three years, the system's got about an extra $5 billion. So we're sitting on right now about $18 billion of investments. But the success that we have um, from those extra contributions is truly a partnership. It's a partnership that we've, we've communicated to you that it is possible to address these unfunded liabilities. Here's a couple of tools to do that. And obviously it's very rewarding for us when we see that you took us up on that and gave us that extra $5 billion to improve the funded status to secure the financial security of these pension payments for the very members that we serve. Here's some graphic information that underscores that point. It's a little hard to see, but the white bar is, is the funded status at the different increments in 2001, and the red is where we were at the end of June of 2022. And if you look at the right-hand side of the graph, you can kind of see that the red bars are higher and there's more of them. And that means that that's, those are the plans that actually improved their funded status from one year to the next. It is amazing the results that we've seen going back to that $5 billion that I alluded to earlier. And then the other thing where we've, we tout our success on this, and we started this back in 2015, but what we've encouraged the employers to do is pay us your entire employer contribution July 1st of every year. Harry will take it and invest it. And Harry can do better than you can do at the local level, regardless of the market. So back in 2015, when we rolled out this idea, we had a whopping $2.3 million, million come in. In 2022, literally in one day, we got paid almost $620 million. 
and that amount's been steadily increasing every day. So for those of you that aren't doing this, please consider doing it. We have a large amount, as you can see, almost half the money that comes in to the system on the employer side is coming in literally in one day on July 1st of the day. That's not the employee contributions, just the employer contributions. So again, the idea there is you give it to us, we'll earn more money than if it's just sitting in the, in the limited funds you can use uh, at the local level. A couple of accomplishments here. Um, this is one thing we're really proud of. Uh, the corrections we made to the tier one gap and the tier two uh, members. The prior board had an interpretation that the employee contribution for those members, and there's about uh, 4,800 of them or so, that their employee contribution was based on the total funded status of the, of the system, not the individual funded status of the plans. And we made a decision back in July that was contrary to what we've been doing historically. So now for those members, the employee contribution rate is based on the status of the plan that they're working for, not the system. What did that do? It really reduced the contributions for members of that system from 11.65 down to 7.65. So in essence, the employees that were in well-funded uh, systems basically got a 4% increase, not only going forward annually, but as the slide talks about, there was about 9,000 members that got $11.2 million in retroactive refunds because we should have been doing that several years ago. So again, just a, a good example of how we're being advocates for our members at the board level. I talked earlier about the cancer insurance program. This is an issue that came uh, through again from Trustee Brian, Brian Moore, but we had situations where we were being told about where people were getting cancer insurance uh, payments uh, through our insurance program and they're getting taxed when they were getting the benefit. So here they are going through insurance, times are bad enough and they're having to pay tax on the very benefit that we're giving them. So we're making changes now to tax the premium on the front end as a benefit so when they actually get the, the payment that themselves on the back end if they have cancer, they don't get taxed for it. Because we're dealing with the IRS, it takes three years to transition to that. We've started that transition though and again, another advocacy role that we're taking for our, for our members. And there's a couple other things there that we're working on. This is the first year um, next year will be the first year that we've actually reduced the tier three employee and employer contribution rate since that tier was created. So I'm getting the, the cards here to speed up and anybody who knows me probably shouldn't have put me first because I tend to take a little bit extra time, but I do want to make sure some of these big things get communicated. I alluded to earlier, you know, we've got almost 18, over $18 billion of assets. Go to that session later and Harry will tell you about how he's, how, what he's thinking and how he's approaching in that. Um, we've updated our pension funding policy and we continue to do what we need to do to make some of the hard decisions to manage those actuary evaluations. We understand if we make certain decisions, contribution rates might go up, but at the same time, we've got to balance that with the systemic and long-term sustainability of this system. What are we working on right now? We've got some legislation you're going to hear about to really clean up this gap one and tier two thing once and for all, and quite honestly, just make it a flat 7.65 contribution rate for those members and not a conditional uh, calculation like it is now. We're looking at health care options um, for our members uh, and see if there's anything we can do in kind of partnering up with ASRS. Uh, we're starting at the next board meeting. We're going to be taking a deeper dive on our uh, cancer insurance program. Is there a more efficient way to administer that? and what kind of money do we need to set aside to ensure that that program meets its goals. And then we're gonna take a longer look at tier three. And we, as I alluded to, this is the first, or next year will be the first year we, we took the rates down, but we'd like to see a policy and a little bit of a procedure about how we go about doing that. So that's from the member side. And on the employer side, we'll continue, you know, continue with an active advisory committee. You'll hear a lot later about the actuarial stuff and the modeler that we're working on and section 115 again is another tool for you all employers to, to use to, to deal with your uh, unfunded liabilities. Our communication engagement is very strong for those of you that are in other organizations like fire districts and whatnot. Um, the presence of the board and staff at those kind of meetings, uh, the Government Finance Officers Association of Arizona, et cetera, it's a, it's a, it's a very important aspect of what we're doing. We need to be out there. We need to be talking to those special groups 
and letting them know about what we're doing. So thanks to the board members and the staff that participate in that. And then the last thing for us at a high level is we can always do better with and improved our reporting. And I just got one example of, of how we're thinking about that. If you look at this graph, this is, this is our funded status at June 30th of 2022. And if you just look at the top row, that's historically how we've reported our performance at an aggregate level. We've got 13.3 billion of assets, 20.4 billion of liabilities, and 7.1 billion unfunded, which is 65%. And where the board is starting to go is a little bit more balanced presentation, if you will. So if you go to the second row and you just take out our two highest unfunded plans, which are Phoenix Police and Phoenix Fire, you can see that our unfunded status goes from 65% to 75%. And if you take that thought one step further and you take out the top 20 unfunded plans, you can see our funded status goes from 65% to 91%. So what does that mean to us? It means our focus as a system has got to be not only on the 20 most unfunded plans, but we also need to be there to support the continued work of all the other 220 plans that quite honestly are at 91%. So it, it provides some balance. If you, if you walk away from the con conclusion that we're 65% uh, aggregate funded, it doesn't leave you with the same conclusion. You're 91% if you take out the top 20. So there will be some work on our, our behalf to really focus on those top 20 plans. And those are the bigger, the bigger uh, cities and towns. In the, in the state as you can imagine. But again, it's just another way that we're looking at information and trying to provide information to our stakeholders so they can continue to make really, really good decisions. So with that, I think that is my last slide. I will wrap up as I started. Thank you very much, not only for being here, but for the service that you provide to our first responders. They can't do what they need to do and worry about their pensions and their disabilities. So that's our job is to take care of all that for them so they can go out on the front lines and do what the public needs them to do. So again, I thank you for coming this morning. I look forward to the rest of the day and hang on to those questions and comments. We look forward to having you come back here at three o'clock and do kind of a wrap up and a debrief. So with that, I'll introduce you to our administrator, Mr. Mike Townsend. Mike. <laughs>